So thank you again, Adela, and uh, a big official welcome from my side to all of you present at the second of our Teaching the Future online course, STEAM at the Gymnasium. International Summer Meetings. As most of you already know, I'm Ana Stamatescu and I'm part of the Asociatia Tech Sub team for five years now and I work with and for amazing and inspiring teachers like you. What we would like to happen in this meeting, a short agenda. I will start by introducing to you a little bit about what we do at Asociatia Tech Sub, mostly for those of you couldn't be present live in our first meeting yesterday, so thank you for the patience of those who already know about us. And after, I will kick quickly give the floor and as much time as I can to our second awesome guest teacher, which is Code Week leading teacher for the Netherlands and not only. And by the end of this session, we hope you will be inspired by her, enjoy our time together, and of course, leave this meeting with at least one idea of an activity to do in the classroom with your students. Asociatia TechSoup in a nutshell. We are a non-profit organization and we work to make technology accessible, understandable and familiar to change makers in our society. Thus, our work is divided in two main directions, with and for civil society and STEAM education. In our two main research-based educational programs, with and for educators, educators and their students, Predau Vitor and Andreptar Digital. We try to equip them with pedagogy, digital skills and applied computer science competences. We are proud to say that we have reached a community of over 20,000 teachers that use digital tools and skills to build a better educational experience in the classroom. In trying to support as best and diverse as we can this amazing community, we also have built and offer teaching materials, a podcast, and regular community meetings. All these programs and resources wouldn't be possible, of course, without this small team of seven people, the Asociatia TechSoup core team members. Of course, there are many other friends and supporters which just couldn't fit in the pictures, in the picture, so we thank them also. Coming back to why we are here. As I started, this is the second of the first meetings we have planned for our summer Teaching the Future online course. This course is possible and will take, uh, will, uh, take again, I will take again a minute to thank to the support of the Romanian American Foundation, Societe Generale Global Social Center, Europe Code Week, Coder Dojo, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation for their support. And now, dear Pauline, thank you for opening this second session and taking the time to share your experiences. I will uh, let you introduce yourself. You have the floor. Thank you. Well, it's really a pleasure to be here. And I hope I can inspire you and really give you one or two ideas what you can start with coding in your classroom. So I will share my screen. I have some questions and we will keep it really practical. And if you have questions, uh, please ask me. The questions will come to me. And um, of course, so I will share my screen. I have some, some nice things to say, I hope. We can see your screen. Very good. Uh, here under is the link for the screen, but also if you want to see my screen, uh, for instance, on a tablet or something else, because I will move to two different screens so you can join in the real life coding and you can try it too. I also put in a QR code so you can scan the QR code and you can follow this presentation or if I go too slow or too fast, you can continue to another slide if you want to, because the presentation is online. I'm a Pauline Maas. I'm originally an art teacher. Uh, when I finished my education, there was uh, no, uh, uh, there were no teachers needed in uh, in education. So I started working in ICT. The computers looked like this, really big, and um, only uh, men worked there. 
So I did that for almost 25 years. And then I thought if I want to have more for more female colleagues, I have to start in education. So I quit my job and started doing that. And then I wanted all, and the schools were really happy that I came to the schools and help them teach uh, the children. They said, come on, teach us uh, uh, Word and PowerPoints. And I said, no, I'm only coming to code. I will teach the children how to learn how to code by making games and websites and apps. So in the beginning, there was nothing for that like 15 years ago. So I started writing books about that. And now this summer, my fifth book is coming about the micro bit. For two days a week, I'm, I'm working as a teacher, an ICT teacher at the school. And now I'm working for a school for blind and visual impaired students. So there's always the question, how can I do that? Of course. So, but that's a nice challenge, I guess. Here's a picture of the summer school of uh, 2019. We were together with lots of AU coding teachers all over Europe. And I think uh, you saw from Italy already, and you will see the man, Gavier, Gavier from uh, Portugal, yeah, or Spain, uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I don't know, yeah. So here, and I'm a, I have four children. So here they are. And of course, uh, Avi have three girls, so they all have boyfriends and that, that is expanding. So when I started teaching coding at school, I um, la uh, later I find out that Jeanette Wing, she is uh, explaining what computational thinking is. Computational thinking is a very difficult word. We always look for a Dutch word for that, but that is, that is difficult. So I always say computer, computational thinking is solving a probl problem in such a way that a computer can carry it out. I think that is important that you don't say it is coding or it is learn how to uh, um, um, write in HTML or Python or something else. No, it is a way to solve a problem with a computer. So that is important. And Simo Papert, he is the first who started coding with children in 1960 already. So that's more than 60 years ago. And if you look very carefully what he has in his hand, it looks like a B-Bot. In the Netherlands, a B-Bot is very popular in schools. Uh, to start really small children how to code because the b-bot is going forward and backwards and to the left and to the right. So, but Spapert said the children can learn the best by making or constructing something and what is really meaningful. So they have to make a poem or a sandcastle or, or a game, something really touch what they can touch. That is important. And same with Papert, he studied on the Jean Piaget. And Jean Piaget, is a, he, um, um, he wrote down the, cognit the co cognitive development of children. And he said the children uh, only will learn if they invent them themselves. So I always say the children cannot learn how to swim by a YouTube movie. They cannot do that. They really have to do it and experience them themselves. And that's the same for teachers. If you want to learn, if you want to teach them how to code, you have to try it yourself and not just for one hour or one afternoon, because your, the, your students will go really fast and they have many questions for you. And it's not important that you have answer to all the questions, but you must have questions to really the basic things. If you learn them how to um, um, make a pro project in Scratch, you must know them how your, your sprite can move to the left or to the right, or who they can say something, who you can go to another level. So those are important things what you have to know, what you have to do. These are the development levels Piaget um, described. And from zero to two, it's sensor motor, so they touch everything. And then it is pre-operational from two till seven, so they really understand it a little bit more and it's getting concrete operational and formal operational. And then they have to be over 12. And only the real coding, so the scripting, the real, because at, um, at those, those three first stages, 
you can teach them how to code by using blocks very easy but it's getting more difficult when you have to teach them scripting and coding then they have to be at the formal operational stage they have to be above 12 because it's really abstract so my question for you oh okay my question for you i'll go one back my question for you is um did you did you do some coding yet with your students that's my only question the next question will follow so i, I will yes yeah, i will launch the question now yes can and, i see uh, the answer yeah yes i will share the answer so okay uh, ho hopefully now our participants can see the poll mm -hmm. um so dacă vedeți uh, son sondajul, uh, vă rugăm să selectați una din cele două opțiuni. So please select yes or no. And after I will share also with you, Pauline, I, I think yeah, it I, will pop I think uh, I, I probably on the screen. Yeah. Yes. Thank you all for uh, saying in the chat that you see the poll. Thank you. We will just uh, wait a little bit more seconds. So um, most of you can uh, vote can choose an answer don't worry if you don't uh, don't get to uh, to pick an answer okay uh, i think I, I can end it now or i i will wait just a few seconds because i i see mm -hmm. they're very eager to answer and i don't want to yeah i see <laughs> they are eager to answer that's really good yeah yes great i see yes 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 <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Uh, yes, I think I can end the poll now and maybe they can share more on the chat. So um, share results, Pauline, you should be able to see the results. That's good to know. Yeah, more than half of them has has, yes, has used it already. Very good. Perfect. Yeah, Thank perfect. you. Yeah. So I will make a print screen for the... Oh, you left it already. Okay. Uh, so my next question will be for you. Uh, what have you done? Have you done Scratch or Python or JavaScript or anything else, Mindstorms or Bbot or anything else? So fill in the words, and it will become in a word in a in a word cloud. We try. That. We hope. We hope. We yes, hope. we hope. We hope. We hope. We hope. It's, yes. uh, it's the first time I'm using this uh, setting yeah. for Zoom. <laughs> yeah. So we will. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> specific uh, for the coding activity. Deci dacă ați făcut activitate de programare, puteți să ziceți doar scratch, roboți, uh, pe foarte scurt nu trebuie să faceți propoziții sau uh, mulțumim că ne împărtășiți și în chat dacă nu vedeți uh, sau nu ajungeți să împărtășiți în polul dedicat de Zoom. So, I'll... A lot of teachers are answering polling. I'm really excited to see what they said also. I think Scratch, I have, I will bet that Scratch will be on top. Yes, that's good, yeah. We'll wait just a few more seconds. So I see in the chat also Microbit, Python, dacă nu puteți să răspundeți în poll și nu-l vedeți, nu vă faceți griji, puteți să răspundeți în chat. Ok, Pauline, I will end the poll now and let the participants uh, share in chat, but I will mm -hmm. share also the results. Let's see. Um, what do you see? Because I can't Nothing. See. Only like a line. Nothing. View details. Uh, I think it's an external link now. Uh, da, da, da so i can't see either i think it's in the back end somewhere mm -hmm. but i think we can rely on the chat to yes i see for, a lot uh, of the chat so lots of yes thank you yes thank you thank you very much so i know that like um more more than half of you have tried coding already so it is lots of scratch and python i see coming by pascal lots of scratch c plus plus so that is really nice so yeah that's good to know i will continue now with my presentation yeah so 
So what is important, what I just said, is that uh, when you start coding too early with your students, it is for them quite difficult. That is what Piaget is telling us. And he did a lot of research about that. So above 12, they can really have this vision about, they can really understand coding because it is quite abstract. And uh, before 12, they can do lots of scratch and do unplugged activities because that's important too. So I did this activity with 100 students, 100, um, now with lots of classes, and we all give those 10 to 12 years old the same material. We gave them a micro bit, we gave them a servo motor, we also gave them a special LED light where they can coat the different kind of colors in it, and they, we gave them a small box. And this, what they, this is what they made after, I think it were like four lessons, something like that. And I did the same project with students from 12 till 14 years old. So what did you think was the difference? You can point it out in the chat. I can read the chat here. So what do you think was the difference between when I did the same project from students from 12 to 14 years old. You can chat, you can put it in the chat. Maybe you could be uh, once more a little bit more specific. Okay. So I, I made this, I did this project with students from 10 to 12 years old. Uh, and they all gave this, they all uh, were given a micro bit, uh, a LED light, a servo motor, and this small box. And this is, this is what they created. It's really colorful and the light, light will go on and the servo motor will go on and off. And I did the same project from uh, 12 till 14 years old. And my question is, what do you think is the difference what those uh, 12 till 14 years old were making? I think they will work in the team. Yeah, they all worked in the team. Yeah. So creative. Yes. What more things did you do? What are you thinking? Just to be sure the translation is correct, I will repeat in Romanian. So, ce credeți că au făcut elevii mai mari de vârste de 12 și 15 ani cu exercițiu propus de Colin cu microbiți? Dacă a fost ceva diferit față de ce proiecte au făcut cei de la 10 la 12 ani. Puteți să ne împărtășiți în chat câteva yeah. idei. It's more difficult, yeah, it looked more difficult, more creative. Bigger concentration, I see. Yes. What is the, the obesity, mini, what is that? Creative. More creative, the little okay. ones Less are colors. more creative, they say. Less colors for sure, yeah. Or oh, first micro or more creative solutions. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. I think you, yes, I think you are all very right. But I will show you and you will be surprised. Because this were the 12 till 14 years old. It was much more creative, but the most important thing is they worked in 3D, much more in 3D with the servo motors. You know, the servo motors were really getting hands to the, the robots were getting open and closed. And they used all the same boxes, but there was not so much color. They didn't put a lot of time in coloring it and making it. They were much more busy with controlling the servos and really making something 3D, 3D what was sticking out. And all the boxes were in a different kind of shape, put in a different kind of shape. Not all the same way, but all different. So for me, you really could see that Piaget is right, that you really have to be a little bit older, really to understand the coding and really do that. So until, and also in the UK, they are much ahead of coding uh, to children. They always, they say like, oh, okay, you can use only unplugged coding until the age of 12. That's no problem. They will understand and do some scratch, that's it. Yeah, so now we go to the practical part. That's what I always like because I'm always very, I like to practical things. I like to do things. So you can join in. 
And we, I will show you how you very easy can make an arcade game uh, on the make code environment. I can show you how you very easy can make like a Python project and making a star and give some ideas what you can do else. And here under the house, it is a JavaScript with P5 JavaScript. And of course, I will show you the micro bits, but material, but things what you can do and things I made. Because my new book is about the micro bits and I'm in love with the micro bits. They call me the queen of the micro bit. And that's not for that because I really like it. So we will start with the make code arcade game. So this is the is a basic game. What I will show you how you can make it, and you can join into this game. Uh, maybe you, uh, I will click on this home. Let's go back. Go back. I will click on this, and then there will be a new screen opening, and maybe you can share this uh, link in the chat. Can you do that, Anna, for me? Yeah. Uh, if you can see the chat, it would be useful for you to put it first in the chat. Yes, I can see the chat. Oh, because I, I'm not sure. And yes. my colleague Adela may. I have it us. in. I put it Perfect. in. Already. Yeah. Have you Perfect. seen it? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So this is on the on the make code environment where you also make the uh, the micro bit things. So and this is a tutorial. I will always start with my students to chase the pizza, and you can choose blocks, JavaScript, or Python. I usually do blocks because then everybody will understand it. And this is the game what we make. We make like a smiley who is chasing the pizza. It is called Chase the Pizza. And here you can see it got 19 levels and we are level two already. And he said, open the scene toolbox, set background color on start. So here I say, it is on start, scene, background color. So that is level one or level two already. So I'm sorry, I looked, it's not in Romania, it's in English, but I'm sure it will come in English. So you say next, set background color. So I can now click on the color and I want a purple one. Yes, and you can see here on the button, it's immediately purple. You can do this also by online teaching because it is easy, they can, they can follow the, the tutorial. And here they say, open the sprites toolbox and then say, set my sprite in the on start. Here you see. And then on the next level, you can draw a character here, or you can go to the gallery and you can pick one. I pick one and I say done just for the time here. Oh, I said done. I say next. Open the controller and here I said move my sprite with the buttons. Here it is. And I can move my sprite already. I can move my sprite already very quickly, you see. I say next. Yeah. And now I open, I make another a sprite. And he said already my sprite, you don't have to be difficult on that. So I say next, set my sprite, open. Uh, yeah, I can rename it, but I will not do it. You can rename it. Sorry, here, this must be fruit. So it's standing here on, and also you can read it out the light because the immersive reader is in here. You say next, and I will pick in the gallery, I will pick an ice cream. So now you see there's an ice cream and I can move my bird behind it. So that is really easy. Here. And then you say, when the two sprites will bump into each other, 
you say next. Here is the player and there's the food. When the player and the food will bump into each other. And then you say the info, you have to change the score. And you can try it out here. You can see the score is going really quickly, you see? Because my sprite is under there. And if I touch it, you will see that the score here is going up. So we're almost there. That's what I put in already. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And here is an open the sprite, set my sprite to a position. Here, I want to put my sprite into a position. Mm -hmm. And on the, I want my sprite, the other one, to into a position automatically when I change the score and I, I get random from the math, then he will pick randomly somewhere. If I touch it, it will go, but it will stay left. Like uh, when you put in scratch, zero, zero is in the middle. Here is not in the middle, it's somewhere else. So, so I can change it here. A here said it has to be 10 and 160, and the other is 10 and 120. So next, and you even can say from the info field, start countdowning, start countdown. You have to grab within 10 seconds, you see? If I don't get it in 10, 10 seconds or five seconds, I lost my game automatically and then it will get by this. So I say next. Yeah, you see eight in my next account and I put in already. And here you said done. Now the nicest part is you can like microbit, you can publish your post. They can read the QR code with their telephone and they can play it on their own phone. And here you have the URL, so they can share the URL with others or maybe when they have to hand it in to you. So we made it really quickly now. So, but now when I, when I quit now the tutorial, they have all, all the blocks who are there. If you are in the tutorial, you only have like the simple blocks, but now you have them all. Now you hear, maybe you hear the music already because here's music, you can have sound or anything else, or you can change the scene or anything else. So for me, do you see my presentation again? Uh, we still see uh, the make, no, I, yes, we can see your presentation. Now you see my presentation or the mic? Yes, yes the okay. presentation. <laughs> okay, that's good, yes. Yes, okay. So here you see uh, the students, they can play it on their own phone, which is really nice because they can take it home with them and they can play it home themselves. And I have here, this is like a game board. Uh, here's, here's a game board. You can put the micro bit in and they can play the game they just made on such a game board. And you have the meow bit. And the meow bit is a small micro bit. And there is a, this is a color screen attached to it. So they can play the screens on those two things, but also they can play it on their phone. Because this is a really nice way to, to, uh, to do coding with the little older, like the, the 14 years old, they love it. Yeah, and they have, and you can do it online too. This is JavaScript, but in a very creative way. And I can, oh, again, here it is. I put in the link in the chat. You can click on the chat, you can click on the link and you can see my P5, my, my coding here. Yes, this is very, is an online tool where you can learn 
JavaScript in a very creative way. So I can press here start and he's drawing a house for me. You see, very quickly, because here stands create canvas 400 by 400 pixels. The background is the color 220. And then fill red. So he is drawing here an, a rectangle. Is that called a rectangle in the red? But if I want my house different color, I want it black. I can type here black. Oh, no. Sorry. To do it again. You see, then you they immediately can see the result. The background is black. And you can give your students this small uh, link and they can start changing the things. You see here is red or they can say blue. Then you won't see it, of course. Oh, no, not today, Tony. Do it again. So they can start. And this is here is 100 by 100 by 100 because it is 100 by 100 by 100. So I can say uh, you can make it bigger 150 by 150, 150. So I've had oh, do, only this. The house is bigger. The house will be the, the underground will be bigger. You see, it is kind of silly now because I changed the coordinates, you see? And if I want to go back, I just say, load again, and I'm back to the original one. If they want to save it, they of course have to make an account for that. But here you can see it is very easy. This is an ellipse and they have to fill it and fill green so I can make an other screen for instance, yellow. Oh, yellow. See, now you see it is yellow. They can make clouds and anything else, whatever they want. So this is a very easy way and it is kind of creative too. So if I go back now to here. Yeah, so for ideas, you can make, I made a tangram, you can make art, you can, I can make, I made a color snake, I make a, made a moving object, object. You really can make very simple things in coding because it's important that they can read it. I put here a link, it is in Dutch, but in there are all the links to my ideas. And then you immediately have it and you can put it in your own way, in your own environment. And you can translate it if you want to. Of course, not the code, but you can make a message behind it. Is that, do you understand that? We will uh, also give this instruction. We could help uh, those after the presentation. Yes, yes, that is really good. Yeah. But I think also we're getting some confirmation. Yeah, very good, very good, yeah. And also, uh, Python is a very known language to teach uh, to students. And uh, of course, teachers find, sometimes find it very difficult. But Python is really important and it is very easy because it's the same. I have um, on the REPL, I go here by touching this. Oh, I don't go to them. I go here. I have to stop sharing. Where is my thing? Stop sharing. Start sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Here, REPL. You can see it repelit.com. That is an environment where you can store all your code, also JavaScript, HTML, and you don't need to install anything on your computer. 
And also you can share a link. So you can make a basic link and your students, they can change it. They can start changing it. And they cannot ruin the link because they can go back. Like I did with JavaScript, I just went back. And you can say, uh, now I'm in my own environment and I'm logged in, but I can say here, run. And you can see he will start drawing a line. He will fill it in a color and he will draw stars, continuously drawing stars because it goes to a long loop. So I can say here, stop. And for instance, pen, he say like in Scratch, pen up, the color is deep blue sky, but I can say, I want black. Black. And I immediately can say run, and he will do it again. Here it goes. The pen is black. The back, the outside pen is black. You see, then it's making a start. And you can imagine that students, they will love this. And also I can say here, pen down, the speed is, five, is 50, I can say the speed is 100. And the pen sign is five, I can say the pen sign is um, 20. And I can say run. If I can add just a little comment here, I'm so glad you're making this example example because uh, it's similar to what we have in our online course about Python, introduction to Python. So thank you for showing this exercise. And That's for nice. those and for those teachers who haven't uh, um, uh, haven't enrolled in our introduction to Python course, we will get gladly uh, rerun it in the in the next um, uh, session. Good. So in Very autumn, good. thank yeah. you. But in the beginning, I was kind of difficult because I had to install things on the computer of my students, and that was in my school that is hardly impossible. But because this is online, you can use it right away. And here you can see the colors, lavender, tistle, plum, violet, and they can look up what other colors can I use in Python to do this? Because it's really nice, I guess, to do those kind of things with your students. And also you will engage much more girls into this. So I can say now stop sharing. And you can say share screen again. Oh, yeah, this one. Here. So here I put in some, um, yeah, a bit on how you can say when they go to the link, you have to say fork and fork will, set, will say you have to go in your own environment. Yeah. And here is what they can change. So this is all in Dutch, but you can fork it into your own environment and you can change this into your own language. And they have to learn that pen down is pen down and speed. They will understand that. And you can, you can, they can change the speed and the pen size and all the colors. They can change all the colors. So this is really one lesson which you very easily can do and what they also can do at home. And here are some ideas. Uh, very often we make a joke in Python because then you have to make a variable for the different kind of persons who are in the joke. The star. You can make hangman in in uh, in Python. You can make him make a password, or you can use like the, a table, an exercise for table. And here's also my weblog with all the ten different kind of Python ideas what you can do. So all ideas for one hour what I do with my students, even my visual impaired students, not of course the stars because they don't see it, but we do a lot of music with our students. And now the micro bits. Uh, what I said, I'm really in love with the micro bit because the micro bit is making coding and making what Seymour Parpet is saying really in one piece, which is very important for me, that you really can make something out of it. So it is in many different countries already, 4.3 million micro bits are being sold uh, in only five years time. So that is really a lot. 
and it is now in more than 60 countries available, the microbit. It's not in so many languages, so this, if, if you have the urge to translate a make coder, please, they are looking for people who want to translate it. It's a very like a scratch is translated in many languages, and they want a micro bit also being the make code also being translated in so many languages. You can code it in different kind of ways. The make code is the most easy way. You can use scratch and make code and the micro bits. There's a special Python for the micro bits. There is an app for it, or you can uh, uh, code it with the mobile app. You can use microblocks or Tinkercad. All you can use them to code the micro bit form. And you can different you can use different kind of ways to use the micro bit and teach micro bit online. Here, what I use is the make code streamer. Then you can add another screen where you can uh, when you can show your students how they have to connect all the different kind of cables and all the different kind of things. That is easy. And they created also a special classroom micro bit where you can uh, make a simple, simple code. And you can uh, like uh, when you do a Kahoot quiz, they can go to a website, fill in a code and they can all get your, uh, your basic code. And as a teacher, you can see what your students are making and you can share that on your screen or they can hand their code in to you. Or also when you want to continue next week, they can go back to that website and they have their code right away. So when they created the classroom micro bit, I was really happy. So I usually use the block coding environment for that. You can see that. Oh. Oh. I used, um, in this presentation are a few examples of simple kind of code what you can make. So this is like the really the basic functions what you can do. Uh, put in um, an icon, show a string, so show some text, show a number. And with the shake, you can make like um, um, a, double stain, a double stain, how you say that in English. Um, so you can shake and you will give a number or a small animation. You can use sound. That's really nice with the new micro bits. I don't know. This is a new. This is a new micro bit. You can see on the micro bit it is some things where you can very easily touch the 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 crocodile clips to it. There's a touch sensor here and also a sound sensor. And on the back there is already a piezo, so you have sounds already immediately in there. So that is nice. So this is really making nice sounds. Uh, this is all standard things what you can do. You connect, can connect two microbits to each other and they can be 60 meters in between. So, and then uh, if, they, if the microbits are on the same radio group, they can connect and there are 250 different kind of radio groups. So you can make really big projects with the microbit. And this is making a small game. You know, this is like a Space Invaders game, which is very easy, got different kind of groups, which are special for the, um, for the, for the gaming. So if I go to the very the simple game, and I will show you, it's always getting a link. So for instance, if I want to change my icon, I can click here and I can change it into this or I can, I want to have extra music. I can say, I want an extra music. I want to giggle. And the giggle will come right away. So that is nice uh, to hear. And um, uh, you, you have to drag it into it. And you, if you're very close, you will put it in. So that is nice. So you can see here button A, there is a number. Button A is a number. Hello. And you see here the shake. I can use the shake. And here I can press AB. You have an animation. 
And here you can see it's V2. So it is ver version two of the micro bit, which is, I guess, it is uh, those you can also see, for instance, here is the micro bit version two. Those are the new things for the version, for the new micro bit version. And also here with the input, here you can see input version two. So those are also the new things. And they promised, even if there will be a version three or four or five, the old blocks, will, you can always use the old blocks. So that's, I think that is really nice. Yeah. So we just did this. So what can you, I am looking always at the time. <laughs> What you can do, if you want to start with the micro bit, start with some basic lessons. So they know the basic code. How can you download? How do you make music? What is a variable on the, on the micro bit? So those really basic things, there are like two lessons. Then you have like three lessons where they make different kinds of objects. So they know how to connect a LED light or how they make a piezo, how, they, how you connect a piezo, or how they connect a servo motor. But not only connecting, but really making something out of it. So that is like for three lessons what you do, and then every week you do something different. And then you can have, uh, then you can do in a group of four students, I did made a design canvas, where they have to think, okay, what are you going to make? Make a drawing out of it. What is your input? What do you need? And then they have to make it and they have to present it. In this part, really make something and they invent something. That is, that is where they will, that is where they will learn everything. So this is really important. You don't need so much working with the micro bits. You need for one classroom, you need like 10 micro bits. They have to work together or with the three of them, no problem. You need cables, piezo, LED lights and maybe 10 servos, that's more than enough. And then a lot of carton, foil, glue, tape, velvet paper, scissors, Christmas lights, etc. You can hack Christmas light with the $1 shops or something else. Uh, everything, what is, um, what is a battery on it, you can connect to the micro bit. So if you have something which is a Christmas light or a van or, um, solar light or anything else which is connected for the battery, you can use for the micro bit. So I always love to hack. I prefer to hack things and get taking things apart and then use it at the micro bit. So I always say, think big, but start small. That is important. And you can follow me on, uh, on Instagram. I make a lot of things on Instagram. You can follow me, my name is for Pip. And on the website, Microbit 101, uh, we, I made 101 projects and they are all online. So you can see. So, and then before I show you things that are standing here, I want to know what are you going to make? What are you going to make in your classroom? when you heard all the four things what I made, what I showed you. For this, Pauline, I will ask our teachers to reflect on your question in the chat. Yes. So you can, can share with us. Yes. Yes. Puteți să ne împărtășiți cu noi în chat, fie în română, fie în limba engleză. Cu ce plecați după această sesiune, cu ce ați descoperit de la Pauline? Mulțumim. Answers already oh, started. Yes, I see. Yes, micro bits. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I will show you some things here. Yeah. Because I'm an embroidery teacher, I like to use um, conductive wires. So I made this, um, yeah, is it, uh, yeah, I made this, can you see it? So there are yes, some yes. special LED lights on there and on the back, I put conductive wire on there. So I sometimes when I give a presentation, I show that. So 
I made like a skirt and shoes and something else. And so I really like to make those kind of things. Yeah. For instance, this is a really nice project, what you can make. It is a monster. And when I put a LED light from my cell phone on here, so I put a LED light from the cell phone on here, this, uh, this will go open and close and he will make a sound. So that's very easy project what you can make from 12 to 14 years old. And they love to decorate it and make it. So you have like a servo, you have a micro bit, and then you need some carton and anything else, something strange things. This is what I made with in the Corona time. It is a Corona meter because the two micro bits, they can see each other and you can, um, they can measure uh, what is the strength of the radio signal he's getting in. So they can measure what is one and a half meter apart of those two. And um, here, I put in here um, also wires, a conductive wires in the back. And it is uh, Frida Kahlo. She's a very important woman in tech, I think, and in art and everything. So it's all LED lights on here and always fun to do. But on here are the crocodile clips. So they can let the lights all on one by one by connecting every time an other crocodile to it. And then more lights will go on and off. And this is the one last project I made last month. It's a bubble machine. It's blowing bubbles. And this is one, is a small motor uh, I bought at a $1 shop. It's like a fan on battery. So I dismantled it. I opened it and used the fan. And this is a servo motor. And it needs to be a, um, a small thing here where he's getting the bubbles on and off. So those kind of things, what I really like to make, you all see that on my Insta account. I think this is my presentation. So I hope you had enough, yeah. Can, can we make a, a picture with all together or are there too many because then I can post it because I'm on, we are the, we took over the code week account this week on the Insta, that would be fun. Before the picture, Pauline, if I may address one question. Uh, yes, that of course. Of course. Out. You're doing all these amazing activities <laughs> uh, and the question is related so uh, about your your freedom to implement these activities in the in, the, in your school. So the question is basically um, how do you respect or if you have at the country level a curriculum you need to follow and how do you um, make synergies to what you want to teach and how do you yeah. mingle? Yeah, um, in the Netherlands, uh, the, uh, we call it digital li literacy. It's got four different kind of pillars and computational thinking is one of them. And it is as, as important as reading and writing and uh, math in the Netherlands starting from this year. So they just are, they, um, so I teach my students, those are 12 to 14 years old. I have them two hours a week. And there are some, um, of course, curriculum things, but because there is no books, or there are no books, so I'm kind of free to implement it. So that is good. There will be, and I'm writing at this moment. I write, I write a book for with another person for a, a big. Uh, how you say that? For that's going to bring in schools with Scratch and Microbit. So, but that that will be done, I think, next year. But everybody is kind of looking for things. And I made a website, codekindre.nl, uh, code and I got 20 different activities on there, all for free to do and make. Yeah, lots of unplugged. For primary, it's usually unplugged. And how's that in Romania? So thank you very much. Uh, the question popped out, uh, up in the context that uh, our teachers feel uh, sometimes very pressured to do all the curriculum and they don't have uh, they feel like they don't have so much freedom and time to implement all uh, um, all the amazing ideas that they might want to implement mm -hmm. so it's a struggle so that's why uh, yeah. we were curious but i think if you make uh, things with How stretch, in your, uh, stretch, if you so, make uh, things 
with scratch and micro bits. I think it, it, it will be all in the curriculum because it's all computational thinking. It's all computational thinking, even with the micro bit, even more than scratch. Are there more questions or things? Thank you. <laughs> Anna, can we still hear you? <laughs> Very good. Yes, we sorry, I, I wanted to say, yes, in the curriculum, some programming languages are mentioned, such as Scratch, Python, but as well, sometimes, so they are um, uh, nice to have, but they're not uh, obligatory. So mm -hmm. that's the, the but you don't have computational thinking in the curriculum. We have IT and C and computer mm -hmm. science for uh, gymnasium and high school. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, and I think it is it is difficult too, but also the the children, they really love it. The students really love the lessons uh, we think and we make. So that is important too. And they learn so much um, basic ICT skills with it too. So it's not only the computational thinking, but also the, the wider range. Yeah, I lost you. You're back. So yes, I'm back. Sorry for this uh, <laughs> no. this back and forth. So thank you, Pauline. Uh, I'm Very I'm nice. afraid as this is a Zoom webinar webinar, we cannot do a wonderful picture with all no. attendees. No, it's um, okay. Yeah. So may maybe we will do a print screen of uh, yes. us. Yes, I do. Or... Print. Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. So we did it. We'll, yes. We we will imagine that all participants yeah, that are everybody smiling. will be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, thank Pauline. you for yeah. all that you shared, your experiences and resources. Uh, mm -hmm. We look forward to seeing our teachers implement at least some of your ideas in the classroom next uh, school year. And yeah. we also want to thank you all the uh, teachers. Thank you for uh, for you being here. We know that is uh, it's also a, a kind of a difficult time for you with all active with all the yes. activities of the school, end of school yeah. year. Yeah. So thank you for making this possible and uh, you will have this recording as well in the That's online good. course. Yes, and, nice. Um, uh, looking forward to meeting the participants or you, all your teachers next week in our last two meetings. So nice. thank you again, nice. Pauline, nice. for making yes. this happen. And you can use all the links who are in the, because you share the link and they can all use the links. It is in Dutch usually, but they must figure it out no problem i hope i hope it's just more inspiration what you can do yeah so i hope i had a good time see you bye thank you bye, bye. everyone see bye you.